It was an act of defiance that changed the course of a nation. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the dark history behind our most celebrated holidays. He was a victim of his time. Uh, who cares? It's what he did. For this list, we'll be looking at the surprisingly dark origins behind some of the most cherished, beloved, and widely practiced holidays. Which of these stories did you find the most shocking? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Valentine's Day Today, Valentine's Day is a special day for romantic partners, often involving flowers and chocolate. I'd like to send a dozen of those to the best girl at my school and this musical card. Well, a dozen of those, but this, this, it's, uh, okay. All right. It's a far cry from the death of St. Valentine himself, which was, well, it wasn't very pretty. Christians were persecuted throughout the Roman Empire from about the 1st to 4th centuries. St. Valentine was a Roman clergyman who evangelized the gospel, ministered to Christians, and allegedly married couples, and it got him in some hot water. Emperor Claudius Gothicus asked Valentine to renounce Christianity and stop evangelizing to the persecuted, but Valentine refused. He was arrested and subsequently executed. It is believed that young couples he had secretly wed would visit his cell passing him flowers and notes through the bars as symbols of their gratitude. The story continues that the condemned Father Valentine fell in love with his jailer's daughter. He was eventually martyred, and St. Valentine's Day was established for February 14th by Pope Gelasius I. It wasn't until the 1300s, though, that the holiday became definitively associated with love and romance. Number 9. Labor Day it's not just about having that Monday off. It's dedicated to those who worked hard and fought for workers' rights. As you can probably imagine, the history behind Labor Day is quite dark. Back in the late 19th century, laboring jobs were notoriously difficult and dangerous. The average laborer could expect long hours, no days off, and excruciating working conditions with little regard for health and safety. Many jobs were difficult, dirty, and dangerous. People worked for 12 hours, six days a week, without fringe benefits, such as vacations, health care, and pensions. In the midst of labor rights debates and an economic depression, the Pullman strike of 1894 occurred. The strike began in Chicago and quickly spread throughout the United States, significantly disrupting the country's railroads. Federal troops were brought in to quell the strikes, and the resulting riots caused $80 million in damages and 70 deaths. People were killed. It was a terribly violent strike. It was not a happy day for labor. To help stem the criticism, President Grover Cleveland signed Labor Day into law just a few days after the disastrous strike ended. Despite Labor Day being signed into law, it would be another few decades before working conditions we see today, like the eight-hour workday, five-day work week, and protection for children in the workplace were signed into law. Today, Labor Day also marks the unofficial end of summer. Number eight, Purim. Taking place in either February or March, Purim is a Jewish holiday in which costumes are worn and feasts are enjoyed. Tens of thousands take to the streets each year to celebrate. Here, everyone dresses up in wild, wacky costumes, enjoys the sunshine, and drinks a lot. It centers around the Book of Esther in the Hebrew Bible, and the story is not pleasant, to say the least. Esther is chosen to become the wife of Persian King Ahasuerus, and her cousin Mordecai refuses to bow to the king's primary advisor, Haman. In retaliation, Haman tries to eliminate every Jewish person in the kingdom. She conspires in a very strange way, inviting the foolish king and the bad guy to a feast twice, and then reveals that her people is under threat. The king says, how can I save you? He's unsuccessful, and the holiday of Purim is held to celebrate the Jewish people's deliverance from total extermination. Everything was topsy-turvy, was turned against him. He plotted to destroy the Jewish people. Instead, those who wanted to perpetrate that evil, Haman and his flock, were themselves uh, destroyed. The exact historical nature of this story is debated, with some believing that King Ahasuerus is a fictionalized version of Xerxes I. Number 7. St. Patrick's Day Ireland was a beautiful island, shrouded in terrible darkness. Warlords and druids ruled the land. But across the sea in Britain, a teenager was poised to bring this nation to God. Really, any holiday with saint in front of it is bound to have a morbid story. Living throughout the 5th century, St. Patrick is credited with bringing Christianity to Ireland. And poor Patrick did not have a good life. 
Despite being the patron saint of Ireland, Patrick was actually born in Britain. However, he was kidnapped by pirates as a teenager and taken to Ireland as a slave. It was while working as a slave that Patrick discovered Christianity and developed a relationship with God. Oh Lord, help me. I sink in a deep mire and there is no foothold. Many are those who would destroy my work. Mine enemies accuse me falsely. He later returned home, but went back to Ireland as a Christian missionary. But even his life in Ireland was not easy, as he constantly lived as an outsider and was at one time beaten and put in chains. Now, legend has it that Patrick drove all the snakes out of Ireland, but to tell you the truth, there never were snakes on the island. When he finally died, Patrick became the patron saint of Ireland, despite his British heritage. Number six, Halloween. The origin of Halloween is a debate mirrored in disagreements over historical authenticity. One leading theory is that Halloween is a Christianized version of an old Celtic festival called Samhain. With possible links to paganism, Samhain was also held on October 31st and honored the year's harvest. For ancient peoples, harvest was a matter of life and death. If crops failed, people starved. Death was always close. Samhain was a dark night, as it was believed that dead relatives and dangerous spirits roamed the streets. It was the time when the veil between death and life was supposed to be at its thinnest. The citizens would leave offerings of food to appease the spirits and ensure their survival. Bonfires were also held to drive away evil spirits. On a day when so many spirits lurked, Druid priests tried to foretell whether their villages would survive the winter. Ordinary Celts lit great bonfires and disguised themselves to repel and confuse the spirits. Modern trick-or-treating originated from guising, in which people protected themselves from evil spirits by dressing as them and collecting food from others on their behalf. Number five, Columbus Day. There's a reason that Columbus Day has faced such massive opposition throughout the years. That better not be Columbus! Take it down. He's going to burn the way our ancestors did. Criticism of the holiday really heated up in the early 90s, as 1992 marked the 500th anniversary of Columbus's arrival in the Americas. Much of the criticism is aimed at the character of Columbus himself and the horrors that his arrival kicked off. The colonial expansion, mass killings, and deaths are all well documented, as is the brutal enslavement of the local indigenous population. Europeans essentially tried to eradicate us. Uh, they brought disease, uh, they brought, you know, they, they banished us to uh, reservations later on when the U.S. government um, became an active force. Columbus himself is said to have enslaved and inflicted pain on many. That's why honoring and celebrating Columbus's importance, but ignoring such heinous atrocities, is unacceptable to many today. Protests of Columbus Day recognition go back to its first dates. In 1893, the Reverend R.S. MacArthur called Columbus a, quote, bully and tyrant, guilty of many crimes against religion and morality. Number four, Day of the Dead. Despite its eerie name, Dia de los Muertos is an uplifting celebration in Mexican culture. In English, it's Day of the Dead. But for these thousands of celebrants, it also means a loving tribute to life itself. Usually celebrated from October 31st to November 2nd, Day of the Dead is a holiday used to honor the deceased and tell funny anecdotes about their life. People go on journeys with the offerings and take them to the burial places. And they're sort of exploring this idea of the boundary between the living and the dead. But its past is still marred by a dark history. Taking place on the same night as Halloween, it's believed that the Day of the Dead is also descended from Samhain and its European successor, All Saints Day. It may also have precedent in an historic Aztec tradition, but this is not officially confirmed. The day has also faced intense opposition from the Catholic Church, which holds that Santa Muerte, the personification of death honored during the Day of the Dead, is satanic. As the sun is losing the battle and the, and the night is gaining, it's universally felt that this is the resurgence of the domain of of the dead and, and our ancestors. Number three, Feast of Corpus Christi. 
Established in the mid-13th century by Pope Urban IV and taking place on the Thursday after Trinity Sunday, the Feast of Corpus Christi is meant to celebrate the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ. For us, one of the effects of the Eucharist, of the body and the blood of Christ, is unity, that Jesus brings us together. So all of us who receive his body and blood should realize that we're one family. The Eucharist is a Christian rite in which bread and red wine is said to become the flesh and blood of Jesus through a process called transubstantiation. The holiday was declared after an event called the Corporal of Bolsina. During a 1263 Mass in Bolsina, Italy, the sacramental bread allegedly began bleeding. This allegedly proved the process of transubstantiation. Although modern study claims that the blood is actually a bacteria called Serratia marcescens. Number two, Thanksgiving. This November holiday shares many of the same criticisms that are aimed at Columbus Day. Days of Thanksgiving had been carried from England to New England by the Pilgrims, and they famously shared a Thanksgiving meal with the Native Americans at Plymouth in 1621. Yet for later generations of colonists, New England Days of Thanksgiving had little to do with the 1621 Harvest Festival. Theirs was a religious holiday, descended from Puritan days of fasting, prayer, and giving thanks to God. However, this story has been criticized by many in recent years who see it as a largely embellished story meant to hand wave away the atrocities that were committed against the Native Americans. After the Native Americans helped the pilgrims survive their first winter in America, the Puritans invited them to share the first Thanksgiving. Oh, oh these are adorably wrong. To critics, one example of harmony, and an exaggerated one at that, does not excuse the later horrific cruelty towards the indigenous population at the hands of these so-called friends. We do have the tradition of celebrating Thanksgiving, but there's definitely a big part of me that every time we sit down for Thanksgiving wants to talk about injustice and the fact that we're like living on stolen land. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Christmas. It's hard to imagine a holiday cozier than Christmas. Unfortunately, establishing the holiday was itself no holiday. So this actually looks kind of fun, Chuck. I agree. Christmas has been celebrated since at least the year 800, but this changed in 1647 when the Puritans banned the holiday on the basis of public drunkenness. It wasn't long until people took to the streets and pro-Christmas riots broke out. This resulted in riots breaking out across several English cities as people really wanted to celebrate the holiday. Regardless, the Puritans stuck to their beliefs, claiming that Christmas was associated with the devil. Described as a hideous horned creature, the servant Ruprecht was a dark and sinister figure who stood in stark contrast to the saintly Nicholas. The holiday was also banned in many areas of colonial America as the pilgrims forbade its celebration. Christmas as we know it today didn't start until the mid-1800s, and that's thanks in large part to Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. You're still here. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here! Yeah! <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.